This is the Taiga Ecosystem. Our biome of study is located in the Midwestern Canadian Shield Forests. The Midwestern Canadian Shield Forests are located in northern Saskatchewan, north central Manitoba, and northwestern Ontario provinces of Canada. In this region is Reindeer Lake, however, no reindeer reside here. An abiotic factor is a non-living condition or thing, such as climate or habitat, that influences or affects an ecosystem and an organism in it. Some examples from our biome include average temperature, heavy snowfall, and sunlight. Average temperatures remain below freezing for more than six months of the year, but summer ranges from a high of 70 to a low of 30, and winter temperatures range from a high of 30 to a low of negative 65 degrees. This means that animals have to adapt to how they find food and survive in cold temperatures because they are this way for most of the year. Extreme snowfall can cause plants to have trouble growing through snow and cause animals to have trouble finding food. In summer months, the forest may receive about 20 hours of sunlight each day, but in winter months, sunlight is limited to just few hours. In the summer, the sunlight has effects of rapid plant growth but this only lasts for about three months. A biotic factor is a living thing, such as an animal or plant, that influences or affects an ecosystem. Some producers in the taiga ecosystem include white birch trees, jack pine trees, balsam poplars, and white spruce trees. Some consumers in the area include the moose and snowshoe hares, which are both herbivores. Two omnivores include the American beaver and the muskrat. Two types of carnivores in the Midwestern Canadian Shield Forests include the Canadian lynx and the bald eagle. The taiga biome contains a good deal of decomposers, some of which include honey fungus, andreabrium, moss, lingen fungi, and omnice water molds. A large predator-prey relationship in this biome is the Canadian lynx and the snowshoe hare. In this situation, the lynx is the predator and the hare is the prey. If the lynx were to die off, it would cause a massive influx in population where the snowshoe hare population will grow exponentially. This in turn will cause the rapid depletion of resources and food. This example is what you call lack of predation and would cause detrimental factors in the taiga ecosystem. A symbiotic relationship in the area is a parasitism relationship between ticks and other parasites and the snowshoe hare. In this type of interaction, the parasite makes the snowshoe hare its host. This makes it to where the parasite benefits while the snowshoe hare slowly begins to die. This would also then cause the populations that predate on the hare to decline as well. A second symbiotic relationship in the taiga is mutualism between beavers and the American river otter. Whenever mutualism occurs, both species benefit. In this case, whenever the beaver builds its dam, the otter and the beaver benefit because they both have a new fishing hole due to the dam and the stoppage of the flow of water. This makes it to where the resource for food is increased, allowing for their populations to grow. One example of a density independent factor in the taiga ecosystem is temperature. This is because the temperature in the ecosystem varies so much that some populations cannot stay in the ecosystem due to extreme hot or cold. Competition is a huge density dependent factor in the taiga ecosystem. This is because there are so many different species of animals that live in the ecosystem that eat the same thing. This makes it to where the rivaling species have to compete for food in order to survive. This goes over to our next factor, competition. In the taiga ecosystem there is an interspecific competition between the American beaver and the North American river otter. This is because both of them have a very similar diet and live in practically the same sort of environments. In this situation, both species love to eat fish, but the river otter usually beats out the beaver when it comes to eating fish. This then in turn means that the beaver has to rely on various types of vegetation. This example of competition is beneficial to the ecosystem because even though the beaver isn't eating fish, it is getting more energy from the vegetation it is eating. This is a food pyramid of a taiga ecosystem. On the very bottom are the primary producers, which are the plants. The next section up is the primary consumers, which are the herbivores. The next section includes the secondary consumers, which are the predators. 
In the very top section is the tertiary consumers, which are predators. Only 10% of the energy is passed on to the very top level of animals. A food web of the taiga ecosystem will show on the very bottom primary producers, which include plants and algae, and also decomposers, which include fungus. The second level on this food web will show primary consumers, which include the snowshoe hare, the moose, the American red squirrel, and the carp. The third level on this food web shows secondary consumers, which include martens, beavers, muskrats, and voles. The fourth and final level on this food web consists of tertiary consumers, which include the Canadian lynx and the bald eagle. The biogeochemical cycle in this area includes the water cycle. Rivers, lakes, and streams all run through this region and evaporate. Then, the evaporation forms condensation in the clouds and is brought back down as precipitation, usually in the form of snow or rain. Trees and plants also go through transpiration and the water is evaporated off the leaves. If a natural disaster went through the taiga ecosystem, such as a flood, life would cease to exist in the ecosystem because there aren't resources for different species to survive. Therefore, organisms wouldn't be able to come back easily and since there are so little months of sunlight in the region, it would be extremely hard for things to come back to life. If organisms came back to life in the ecosystem, it would first include different plants and trees and then would go on to animals and decomposers. Industrial logging and deforestation is one major human factor that affects the taiga ecosystem. This type of log logging greatly impacts the many populations in the ecosystem because it starts destroying the first branch of food chain, the producers. During logging, humans destroy many of the trees in certain areas. This then causes the destruction of much of the first branch in the food chain, the producers, the most vital branch in the food chain for an ecosystem to provide and survive. For the future, most animals in the area will either die off or leave the ecosystem. This then makes it to where the ecosystem is inhabitable for probably the next few decades or at least until more trees and plants start to grow.